What's up, fellow gamers? Freak here. I am a game designer on the Seven Drift team. We are the team responsible for about 80% of the changes you see in patch notes every two weeks in League of Legends. And I'm here to talk about um, a, a misconception I saw recently, a question that was asked, and I wanted to, I guess, bring this out to more people uh, so that it was uh, more easily addressed. People could, could uh, I guess, go on with having proper insight on what's going on here. Okay, so uh, we are preamble. Let's get into it. So the question that I saw asked recently uh, I'm going to paraphrase this that I don't have in front of me, but it's it directly is the question, which is um, this was in response to when we were buffing Aatrox in patch 13.14, and the question was like, well, why were your goals to buff Aatrox by 1.5% win rate and not something else like making the experience of playing him more fun or whatever? Um, and so I understand how the question is asked in this way. Um, the question makes uh, incorrect assumptions, and that can be partially my fault. That's fine. Uh, let me let me sort of dispel that as that is kind of not the right question. Um, so when we talk about win rates and win rate changes via, uh, hey, we want to buff champions, we want to nerf champions, and we're addressing a certain win rate, um, win rates are not, they're often not the goal. They can be, um, but are often not the goal. Win rates are the constraint. Uh, win rates are the constraint uh, for how much we can buff or need to nerf a champion. Um, so, for example, it, with the Aatrox changes, uh, I looked at Aatrox and I shipped the changes for 13.14. And what I did was say, okay, let me assess uh, who are some carry top laners that we can give buffs to. Um, right, who who have room for buffs. These champions aren't seen in pro play very much, so we're not going to disrupt pro play by giving moderately sized buffs to these champions. Uh, their win rates are relatively low, and so there's room to buff them without them feeling like or appearing as overpowered champions. Uh, so by comparison, right, like, we probably couldn't buff Jax, who has a pretty good win rate and a moderate ban rate, um, and has already seen a fair bit in pro play. Jax Though if we buffed Jax, we would have more of a carry top threat in League of Legends, especially in pro play, but also solo queue. We care about both these things. Um, Jax is probably not a good candidate for, let's make sure there are a wealth of good top lane carry options. And say, so, okay, well, we can buff Aatrox. His win rate's low. He's not probably very much cool. And we have about 1.5 win rate worth of, worth of bandwidth. Uh, and so th there's the two parts of buffing a champion, by the way, is, well, actually, maybe even three, is one... We might have directional goals for the game, and actually something that I'm very keen on, um, on SRT, on balance, is actually, it would be cool if we said, actually, we want to do a durability update 2.0, or maybe move toward one. So what if we, on average, uh, buffed durability and nerfed damage? On Not in every case, obviously, but like... What if, what you know, maybe we actually want to go even further than the durability update went and actually continue to uh, make League of Legends have slower-paced combat? Well, then we can say, look, instead of doing a, like, a big sweeping change that takes months, we can say, well, if 15 of our 20 changes every patch move towards durability update 2.0, then by the end of the year, we've shipped durability update 2.0. Um, and I think that's actually very valuable because we do a lot of these short-term changes anyway, and we can just have like directional alignment where on average we move in a direction. Okay, so that can be one of them, right? It was one of the three, which is we might have like game direction stuff. And in this case, game direction stuff was, hey, top laners have fairly low agency, specifically in the late game. Uh, the late game carry potential of top laners is not very strong. Um, and this is a very deep rabbit hole to go down to, by the way, of like, well, how should a top laner um, express their power late into the game? This is not that video, but hey, a consideration is late game conventional top lane is a bit low. We should try to raise it up. And this is a, a small piece of a very large problem. But well, in the meantime, we can go in this direction. Okay, so there's part one. Um, the second part is about the champion itself. And it's, it's, um, it's actually like, where I would say most of the design work comes in, which is uh, there's just a lot of considerations around designing a champion well. And and the, the thought in the back of my head is that um, I would always feel bad if we had to revert a specific change to a champion because it meant that right, if, if I'm ever making a change to a champion, in my mind, it's okay, how can I improve League of Legends the game the most possible? Um, there's a lot of considerations here. And a lot of them are at odds with one another, right? So... Um, Hey, if I can improve League of Legends the game by um, making top lane late game carries more prevalent or making top lane carry more late game, then I'm going to, on average, and I'm going kind of back to the first point, but like, it's still true, is, well, then if I'm going to generally give top laners late game carry 
buffs or gold scaling buffs or something to that degree, then cool. Or if it's something like, well, yeah, we actually want to shift the game towards more durability late game. I'm not saying this is the goal, but if this is the goal, then I want to, on average, ship changes that are going to go in that direction. Uh, but let's narrow back in onto the champion itself, which is, hey, let's make sure that... Um, you know, we push this champion in a good direction, right? If this champ, if this change is good for the champion, that means, right, like, of all things we could have buffed, this is the single best thing we could have buffed about this champion. And if there's something we nerf, it's, oh, well, yeah, this is actually the single worst thing about this champion that we should nerf it down. Um, and, like, to me, that's the goal, right? And so, for example, um, Aphelios changes that shipped a couple patches ago. Um, basically, uh, the nerfs were some of the outstanding fairly egregious things about Aphelios' kit where it's like, oh yeah, the turret can duel a champion a lot of the time and has just sort of too much damage overall. The amount of uh, extra Calibrum sniper shots that come out of the, the white turret, right? Um, or just, yeah, this, this you know, the amount of Omni vamping coming out of um, Aphelios, he's just too tanky for a marksman, and, you know, as with all champions, he should be, as with all marksmen, he should be burstable unless he's actually building specifically tanky. Um, and yeah, directionally, it should be good for the game, and, and ideally, it means that, hey, if I made the right change, that these changes aren't getting reverted because I made the right change for the champion, for the health of the game, and for the health of the champion. Uh, but this means that you have to pay special attention to, um, the direction of the champion actually being correct. Like, hey, how much Omnivamp is good for Aatrox? I don't have a good answer to that one. Um, and so if I was to say, hey, I want to buff or nerf Aatrox's amount of Omnivamp, I need to have very high confidence that we actually think the amount of vamping he should have should be over here and not where it is now. Is it higher? Is it lower? I, again, I don't have an answer, um, but it's also not what I touched. Um, but if, yeah, Aatrox is the world ender and he's supposed to kill a bunch of people, well, his buff being he does more damage is, is on Fantasy of the Champion and everything else. Uh, another example being uh, Melio. So Melio, uh, I shipped uh, both recent sets of Melio nerfs, um, and uh, I had some missteps along the way, stuff that never went to PBE. Uh, one of them was actually lowering the range buff of his W, and that was shot down very quickly and for good reason, because that is his unique thing, right, that lets Melio stand out the most. It's like, no, he gives people range. Let that be strong is probably correct, versus like, okay, I give a bunch of people this dot on auto attack is not the important thing. Melio's probably biggest strength and coolest thing is, um, okay, range is the better output for my AD carry is stronger and not their burn damage or their on hit damage. Um, and the AOE shielding and self cleansing, um, right? Like the, the really defensive enchanter outputs are the most Melio of his outputs as opposed to like, oh yeah, your burns and auto attacks. We can just nerf that. It's not sacred. Um, the amount of boost speed he gives I think is not sacred. And considering the fact that the ability doubles, he actually still has a 40% boost speed buff on the kit. That's still well within numbers where this is a satisfying ability to cast on people, right? Um, and so uh, a, a really large portion of it, the second portion of it, and I would say probably the most important portion of it is is making changes that are right for the champion. Um, right? Like, hey, you know, we, we want to do a task where we're going to assess a bunch of top laners and figure out things that we can buff. Okay, well... Um, we're going to buff some top laners. We're going to buff some items frequently used by top laners. We're aware that we are constrained by the power level of jungle. And so we identify a bunch of items that are mostly used by top laners more so than junglers. Um, okay. And there are items we could have buffed. We decided, no, it's it's not correct to buff Silvermere Dawn. It's it's not better for League of Legends as a game, have Silvermere Dawn be a more frequent item. It makes fighters checkmate mages really hard, and that really, really sucks because what does Cinder do when you just brush off her only CC and then you just kill her because she has no counterplay left? Um, again, we can go a lot farther down this topic, but hey, that is the idea, right? Of, of let's do changes that are right for the game. Let's do changes that are right for the champions or the items that we are changing. And then the third one is let's hit a magnitude. Um, and so uh, before I'm going to explain magnitude a little bit, I'm going to talk about... Um, how we align on changes, um, uh, essentially. So I talked about the, um, so if we, so let's say we're going to grab some changes, right? And, and, um, on, on Monday we decide, okay, we're going to nerf Shivana, we're going to nerf Aatrox, we're going to buff Gwen, we're going to nerf Jax, we're going to do whatever, right? And say, so, okay, we are aligned as a team that we should change the champion, change the game in these ways. 
Um, and usually this comes along with like explaining why you want to do this, right? Uh, we should nerf Aatrox because his, you know, th as an Omni Vampire, he's just going to be too fickle and he's going to be really frustrating. Okay, cool. That makes total sense. Um, hey, we want to buff Gwen because she's low win rate in solo queue. I'm not sure I didn't double check, uh, but I'm just going to assume, right? I wasn't here for the meeting. Um, hey, we want to buff Gwen because she has room in solo queue and she's a carry top laner and, you know, she has room. And, and again, if our goals are to do this, we should do that. Okay, great, right? And, and you sort of like, you go down the line and, and you, and you, and you suggest what you think you should change and you give it the rationale and people will say yes, people say no, and then it goes on the board and we're going to do the work, right? Um, <clears throat> so then part two, everyone grabs stages they want to work on. Um, I tend to grab bot lane and jungle stuff because those are the champions I tend to know the most. I uh, played 200 games split pretty equally across jungle, bot, and support last season. Um, and... <clears throat> So I'm going to know the champion a little bit better. I'm going to know the feel a little better. Whereas, like, I don't really understand mid lane mechanics as well. I don't really understand top lane mechanics as well. Because I don't play the rules very well. I, I am a mid-diamond jungle bot support. I am probably a... Well, in the old ranks, it would be, like, high plat. But I'm probably a mid to high emerald um, solo laner. It would be my guess. I haven't actually tried. But that would be my guess, right? So I just don't understand the rules as well, right? Um, so anyway, whatever. That's getting off topic. But, so, okay, people grab their work. And then what happens is um, a designer is going to... Uh, do three things, basically. Um, they're going to write a context paragraph around um, why this champion deserves changes, um, why we're doing the changes we're doing, and the expected results of those changes on sort of vague terms. They're going to deliver a change list, and sometimes multiple. Uh, sometimes people will bring up, I've done this as well, where it's like, hey, um, I've got like one of three directions I might want to go here, or I've got one of three exact change lists I want to implement. Um, and then they'll have a target magnitude. And this could be things like, um, 1.5% win rate, low ELO skewed. This could be minus 30%, uh, pro presence. This could be minus 3% win rate to AP builds, minus 1.5% win rate to enchanter builds. But it's like, Hey, what are the measurable, what are the goals for my measurable results? Right. And then the implicit stuff is either in the context paragraph or it's implied of like, this champ should be overall healthier, right? And and so you basically say, okay, well, here's what I'm planning on doing. And we share it with the team. And a lot of people have access to this. So Champions team has access to this. The Gameplay Analysis team has access to this. Basically, everyone who works on League of Legends gameplay has access to this. Um, and if they want to chime in, they can. Um, you can vote up and down. The votes aren't binding. We do not design by committee. Um, we, like, designers make their choices. And the lead on the team signs off on work. And so ultimately... It comes down to actually two people deciding if this change should happen. The designer who grabbed the work say, hey, if I'm going to work on, uh, let's say I'm going to work on Ivern, people can give me feedback. I'm going to be like, well, I want to make these four changes to Ivern. And then if the lead says, okay, that change is happening, right? And um, the feedback is useful. The feedback should be listened to, should be considered. At the end of the day, I'm going to be the one thinking about Ivern more than anyone else in, during that time because they've got other stuff going on. And if it's like, okay, I hear your feedback. I see what you're saying. I think I'm still doing the right thing. So for example, um, uh, changes I made to summons in this patch uh, that are going live at 13.15, I changed their durability scale on character level instead of on ability rank. And August, who's uh, ostensibly runs game design for the champions team, um, was like, hey, um, I have concerns about you making this change. I explained with how far. He's like, okay, I, you've convinced me. I think you're you're making the right choices here, right? So it's like, this is very collaborative and, and the team is involved and I love it because the team is freaking awesome. Um, but anyway, so we go, okay, Here's the context. Here's why we're doing this change. Um, here's what I want to change. And here's the target magnitude of the change, right? Because we can measure that output really easily. Um, and, and right, but the, these are all different things and they're all equally important. And so the feedback is given on each of those things where it's like, oh, actually, I think, yep, I think this change is really safe or I think this change is really risky. I think we might want to take a different tactic because we don't have a lot of time to validate um, how much this change list is. Um, or I think your magnitude goals are wrong, or I think this change is actually larger than your magnitude goals. And so I think you sh I think these changes are directionally fine, but walk them back by a half or a third or something. Um, so you get feedback on all these kind of things. Uh, and some of them, again, like I talked about Melee Nerfs that I shipped or, or um, had in a paper kit before where it was like, hey, what if we nerfed the range on W? And the it was like, no, we shouldn't nerf the range on W. This is a unique thing. We should keep it. Find a different nerf. Sure, okay, right, no problem. His burn damage goes down, that's fine. Um, and and so, like, these are all the things that happen, right? And so, our goals are always make the game better and do right by the champion. Our constraints are win rate delta, right? Um, and I realize that, like, though that's implicit in my head, like, obviously, like, we're, we're not just saying, like, okay, well, we're going to spin the wheel and we're going to nerf 1% win rate of base health. It's like, that's not the goal here. Um, 
I personally value consistency quite a bit, and so I try not to nerf any AD carries below 60 functional base AD. And this, you know, things like Varus W and Kaisa passive, and even um, like even things like Silverbolt sometimes can can exist here as well, where it's like, oh, actually, um, you know, as long as but it's like, oh, if a if every AD carry deals 60 on hit damage at level one, it makes it really easy to transfer your skills from playing one AD carry to another because like, oh yeah, um, I know how much damage I'm going to do to a minion here, right? Um, of course. Right, some people can do better or worse than others. Um, that's just going to happen sometimes. Um, that's okay, but like, because this is not like the number one goal. It's just like, hey, I like to hit it if I can, and so that's why um, Caitlyn Nurse earlier this year was two AD and one armor because I had a win rate magnitude in mind. Of I think we need this much win rate magnitude to kick her out of the number one AD carry spot in pro play. And the tactics we're going to choose are let's give her the normal sixty attack damage on AD carries and. I didn't really mess with her abilities, so I chose one armor because as a long-range champion as Caitlyn, if she's jumped on, she should actually be able to be killed. So we'll do a durability nudge here as well. That seems reasonable. Um, right, and it's like there's this consideration around like why these are the, cha the changes being made and not it wasn't like R damage or R cooldown or E mana cost or whatever. These are all possible levers you can get winner out of, but what I chose to do, right? Um, so that's like a big thing is, is I want to sort of like clarify that concept around why we do what we do. Um... And I think that mostly covers what I want to talk about with this topic, which is um, we'll often, like at least I will, I will often talk about win rates uh, a lot publicly because they are clearly measurable and that way we're like using equal amounts of information. But at the same time, it's like, well, I made this change because I want to nudge the late game carry potential of top lane. And so I'm going to generally buff like late game scaling. It's why the Vola Bear buffs was the percent missing health on his W. It's why the Ajax buff was percent... Um, AD ratio as you max it on his Q. It's why uh, I had I had some level of oversight in a hand in the fighter item updates, like small ones that we did in 13.14, which was uh, Shojin and Sterix and, and then also some tank items, which is like, hey, well, let's let's make sure the items that you're going to buy second and third um, are good enough so that if you're earning gold, you can buy better items with them, which then that also increases your Laking Carabential of top lane. And it could be that our magnitudes were too low and that we should have buffed Shojin by more and Randos by more and all the other things by more. Uh, but directionally, it's like, ah, right? We're, you know, in the last month, we've shipped 10 changes that have directionally said top lane Laking Carabential is higher. Does not mean we shipped the Silver Bullet and the game is perfect now, but it's like, well... We can at least go in this direction and say, well, we're, we're nudging towards a positive scenario where top laners have a bit more going on. Of course, small incremental changes aren't heavily felt, but at least we're going in the right direction, and that is a good thing overall. So that's hopefully does a pretty good job explaining. Um, it's sort of the consideration around, like, we're not exactly targeting win rate. We're targeting gameplay positive changes for the game and or for the champions. And we have a win rate magnitude to hit. If Shivana is a 54% win rate champion... Um, that's probably just too high, and so she should be nerfed by, I don't know what we're targeting. Were we targeting 1%? Were we targeting 2%? Were we targeting 2.5%? I don't know. Again, her fighter builds went up by 4% win rate. Her mage builds went up by about 2% win rate. Um, and now her fighter builds are the best builds by far. That's fine. I think it's probably, personally, I think it's probably the, the better for Shivana to be a fighter primarily and have a mage build be a solid alt build. But, well, she's clearly too strong, and so she could be nerfed a bit. And that's fine, because that's better for the game if champions are more fair on average, right? And while we're here, well, Shivana is a low elo skewed champion. She tends to do better in normal compared to elite because she's a power farmer who wants to scale late and then she takes over games with, you know, having more stats than you. It's like, well, nerfing scaling stats is a really, is a tried and true lever for nerfing low elo compared to high elo. Okay, cool. Congratulations, right? We did the thing. The, the thing that we wanted to do has been done. Congratulations. We did it. Um, so those are all considerations here. I, I I guess the one last thing I'll say is um, this is not necessarily as on topic, but I mentioned there's basically two big ways we, we align on changes. One is the Monday morning. Uh, we've got some data from the patch. What do you want to do? The other is basically um, brainstorming future large ideas. This would be things like, hey, um, we want to push Xerath brand, etc., cetera, uh, toward mid lane away from support. Um, you know, like let, let's ensure we have like good mid lane power levels for these former mid laners who have become supports recently. This is like where the Xerath changes came from, for example, was uh, cool. Yeah, this is something that we want to do as a team. Okay, and then just over time, like designers pick up work they want to do because they want to shift Xerath over. They want to, you know, do whatever. Um, that's a very, very quick answer to it. There's much more that goes on overall, but I, I, I said there's two ways to do things and, you know, then I never said the second one. So uh, there, there's essentially backlog planning. 
um, where people kind of come up with ideas like, well, I think we should go in this direction, we should go in this direction, we should do whatever. Um, and if there's enough buy-in, then it's like, yeah, cool, we'll put that on as a as a longer-term project that we want to do. And then next time we plan for a designer sprint, um, I, I'm not even sure what's on my sprint, for example, this week because I wasn't here on Wednesday. I was on PTO. Uh, but I'm going to have probably two or three tasks that I'm supposed to ship um, or deliver for 13.16. And it's going to be stuff that was on our backlog of like, we think it's going to be directionally good for League of Legends. And it's, you know, this will probably take five days of work. This will take two days of work. This will take one day of work. Cool. That's, here you go, right? Like put these on your, put these on your sprint, go deliver these changes, uh, come back when you think you're done. Um, so anyway, that is hopefully a clarification on win rate targeting. Um, it's just a simple shortcut to explain the magnitude of stuff, but uh, our goals are more than just get win rate, close your eyes. It's, right, delivery change is good for the game. Your constraints are win rate. Hope that helps. See ya. Bye-bye.